Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to a new YouTube video on the channel and today guys we are here for another three game match reviews, yes, here we are for another three game match reviews um, and today we're going to be reviewing the first three games of round 19 of the 2022 AFL season, I'll tell you three massive games these were right here, three massive games and um, there's a lot to unpack from all three of these games, there's a lot going on. So I will be here to review them. Uh, so the games we're going to be reviewing are Richmond versus Freeman, North Melbourne versus uh, Hawthorne, and Sydney versus Adelaide. So three massive games, a lot to learn. But before we go ahead and hop into things, I just want to give one quick shout out. So a quick shout out to the Floghead 205 or 205, who is trying to get to 350 subscribers. If you haven't gone ahead and subscribed, please do go ahead and make sure that you have. 350 subscribers is what they want, so let's see if that, if we can help get them there. So it was a massive game on Friday night between Richmond versus Fremantle at Marvel Stadium. Richmond 7-10-52, Fremantle 7-10-52, and it was the first draw of the year. Scenes at Marvel, the first draw of the year in a actually very low scoring game, 52-52. I don't think anyone expected it to be this low scoring. Possibly one of the lowest scoring games of the season. Uh, yes, you do have St Kilda Port Adelaide 42-43. But other than that, I think this one would pretty much be in second or third place for the lowest scoring game of the season. 52-52. The combined score of just 104 on the night. 14 goals, 20 was the combined score. And um, yeah, you could say Richmond had their chances and didn't use it. Um... Cumberland played on the side and Bolter took way too much time. So they did have, they had three or four chances to win the game, Richmond, and didn't take it. But it was a step up from last week versus North Melbourne for sure. And the Dockers were looking to respond against a, um, a shock loss to the Sydney Swans. And, well, can you say that exactly that? Not really. Um, It's a bit interesting when it's a draw, the first draw of the year. But the Dockers, they started off strongly kicking the first one, two goals of the game. And they had a third in no time. But then the Tigers come back at the end of the, uh, the first quarter to lead in the second quarter. It's a pretty much an even game. And then in the third quarter, the Tigers kick the only goal to lead 46 to 39. I was like, mind blown. When I saw the score at three quarters, I was like, geez, 46 to 39. This is a low scoring contest. Um, low scoring contest for sure. And it stayed that way with the one, two, three goals in the final quarter. With it all finishing in a draw after Richmond had their chances. um, And there was no better side in this one. It was just Fremantle and Richmond. But Richmond did bring the intensity. They made Fremantle play like a final side. And it's just going to ask the question, are Fremantle built for finals? Are they, like they did, it sometimes looked like they weren't coping under the pressure, which could, could lead to a very big fall in finals. Hayden Young, 31 disposals. Uh... Shai Bolton or Shea Bolton, two goals, 132 disposals for Hayden Young, seven tackles for Brayshaw. But this this game had pretty much everything to a finals kind of game um, in it. Hayden Young, 132 fantasy, 124 for Ryan, 105 for Prestia and Brody, 103 for Vlosten, 98 for Brayshaw, 96 for McIntosh, Akers and Clark. Goals and behinds now. Two goals for Bolton was the only multiple goal scorer. The other goal scorers included Revolt, Bolter, Cumberland, Tabernet, Logue, Banfield, Sonsi, McIntosh, Aish, Brody, Walters, and Fife. Now to the disposal count we go. 31 for Young, 30 for Prestia, 28 for Brayshaw, 27 for Sarong, 26 for Brody, 24 for Clark and Ryan. Now to the marks we go. 14 for Young. 11 for Ryan, 8 for Tarrant, Broad and 8. 7 for Clark and Cox. Tackles, 7 for Shaw and Brayshaw. 6 for Cumberland. Um, Vlosten, McIntosh, Ryan and Logue. Now the hitouts, 28 for Darcy. 22 for Soldo. 10 for Nan Curvis. 6 for Logue. Logue's becoming the Dockers' ultimate swingman. Uh, the inside 50s were locked, 51-50 in favour of Richmond. But the disposal count was all Fremantle. Um... And then, not really a lot more to see at the moment. The Dockers did win clearances. They were a lot more effective at stoppage clearances. Um, nothing else looking amazing. The Dockers had a lot more uncontested ball, however, than the Tigers. Um, 
took 10 more marks, although the Tigers took more marks inside 50. The, Do the Dockers took more contested marks. However, uh, the Tigers did spend more time in front, but it was one of those games where it was really low scoring and scrappy. It had the finals atmosphere about it. It played the way like a finals game would. It made both teams had to defend. Both teams had to put on the pressure for a really scrappy game, putting on pressure for a lot more time, and it looked like a real finals game. And Richmond, really good comeback. Well, really good comeback from last week. And the Dockers, this did test them as to what finals football... This is, was this was like a pre-finals game, which we're going to be seeing more of these over the next few weeks to see how teams are going to be going. And it was a good game. And, um, yeah, both sides ended up on a draw for the first draw of the year in a really cracking contest, which felt like a finals atmosphere. Now down to Blunston Arena, where North Melbourne, 11 9 75, got smashed by the Hawks, 19-7. 121. This was North Melbourne's ultimate chance to win another game, and it didn't come here after a, a very disappointing performance where they probably didn't even deserve to put on 75 on the board. Um, Hawthorne had the potential to win this game by, well, pretty close to about the 80 point mark, but in the end, it's only 46, which North Melbourne would be like, phew, if we got away with uh, that one there in Hawthorne. Um, unfortunately enough, couldn't get as much percentage as what they would have been hoping for. An eight goal to North's first quarter saw it being three to forty nine at quarter time, and it was over from there. And even though the Hawks only kicked one goal in the second quarter to the Roos two, it was still over. It was still hovering around the forty point mark at half time. And then the Hawks just put on the accelerator again in the third quarter, and you know it's over. And then the final quarter, the Hawks kick five goals, the Roos kick seven, but it's still not good enough by the Roos. After winning last week, it was a, a, a very disappointing performance. Yes, Larky was out, and it's showing how much of a key pillar he is for this side. Um, as to why they're like, as to why they lost by a big margin. Tom Mitchell, thirty-two disposals, five goals for Jack Gunston, one hundred twenty-two fantasy for Hall. Seven tackles for Dylan Moore. But it was an ultimate day out for the Hawks. And after a season that's been rough for them, this was something that they needed. A really comfortable win. Um, a ground they don't know. Hall 122 fantasy. 118 for Gunston. 113 for Davies Uniac. 108 for Zebel. 107 for Newcomb. 106 for Mitchell. 104 for Moore. Uh, now the goals and behinds. Five for Gunston. Three for Zebel. Two for Newcomb. Davies Uniac. Bruce Reeves. Morrison and O'Meara, but it was a lot. It was a day out for most of the Hawks players. They won pretty comfortably, put on a high score on the board. Um, 32 disposal for Mitchell, 30 for Davis Uniac and Hall, as well as Newcomb, uh, 26 for Scott, 25 for Anderson, more marks now, 10 for Mackay, 9 for Zerha, Scrimshaw, 7 for Hall, Zebel, Gunston, Mitchell and Hardwick. Tackles now, 7 for Young and Moore, 6 for Curtis, Five for Greenwood and Davies Uniac. Hitouts now. 27 for Reeves. 19 for Goldie. Um, 17 for Coleman Jones. 14 for McAvoy. Showing that Reeves is now taking that centre ruck role. Uh, two for Lewis as well. Team stats now. Um, and the Hawks smashed them in inside 50. The Roos only went inside 50 38 times compared to the 68 for the Hawks. And you see that big differential and you know... You know, and even though the Roos actually surprisingly had more of the ball than the Hawks, but the Hawks could have used it a lot better than the Roos did. Uh, surprisingly, the Hawks won more free kicks, and then again, they did dominate in the hitouts and the clearance industry. Um, nothing else looking amazing. Um, here, they took more contested marks, led for the whole game, definitely deserving winners in the end. Probably should have won by more than what they ended up doing, applied more pressure. Uh, especially inside 53 to 14 tackles in favour of the Hawks. But this was a good game for the Hawks. They played it out, played really strongly, took the premiership points and percentage and yeah, gave North Melbourne a reality check uh, that they're not in a world of their own after winning last week. And yeah, this, was, this may have been a short time for North Melbourne, not a long-term improvement. So, same time at the SCG, Sydney, 17, 16, 118, smash the Crows, 12, 13, 85. And the Crows were in this game for most of it, but it was just the first quarter that really put them off. The Swans, 9 goals, 3, 57 to the Crows, 15 in the first quarter. It was never going to be enough. And even though the Crows did chip away at most parts to work the margin back to a point where it was 
around that 20 point mark but they just couldn't do any better than that uh, and it was the Swans that were very deserving winners in the end they comfortably took out this game and uh, yeah it was a strong first quarter the second quarter was in favour of the Crows third quarter also in favour of the Crows final quarter in favour of the Swans but it was a really big game for the Swans. They had more percentage here and actually probably could have taken way more percentage. They had the chance to make this a 100-point blowout. But the Crows, as they always do, they hung in the game. They never gave up. And that's the good thing about the Crows is that they are on the right track, but they never give up even when they're so far down. But, um, yeah, this was going to be a tough game to win. SCG, Sydney so strong there. And no surprise that they did end up getting, well, pretty much hammered in the end by 33 points. Rory Laird, 38 disposals, uh, 138 fantasy for Laird two. 14 tackles for Berry, two goals in a minute for Berry. He did a lot today. Three goals for Will Hayward as well. Now the player stats we go. 138 fantasy for Laird, 124 for Berry, the two best players on the ground. 118 for Mills, 115 for Warner. I'll tell you, Warner, going to be an absolute superstar, along with Berry. And Saligo had his pretty good moments today as well. 180 fantasy for Mills, 115 for Warner, 114 for Parker, 108 for Stevens and Keys, 105 for Rowbottom, 104 for Fox, 104 for O'Brien, 103 for Dawson, uh, and then 101 for Heaney, 98 for Papley, 94 for the Lizard or Nick Blakey. Um, now the goals are behind. Hayward and Walker got three along with Buddy Franklin, two for Papley, Heaney, and Berry. Now to the disposals, 38 for Laird. Again, he does it a lot. 29 for Parker, 27 for Mills, 26 for Rowbottom and Blakey, 25 for Warner, Stevens, McInerney, Fox, 24 for Berry, 22 for, ba- for Papley, Marks, McInerney with the eights, along with Lloyd, Fox, 7 for Rampy, Mills, Blakey, 6 for McCartan, and then, uh, oh, hang on, wait, I'm reading the wrong numbers. 8 for McInerney, 8 for Lloyd and Fox, Seven for Rampy, Mills, Blakey. Five for McCartan and McCartan and Dawson. I was reading the wrong numbers there for a minute, actually. That was not the greatest of moments. But anyway, anyway, um, all these numbers are squirmed in with each other. It's pretty close. Um, 14 tackles for Berry, 12 for Parker and Keys, 10 for Heaney, uh, 8 for Rowbottom and Warner. And yes, I am reading the right numbers this time. 51 hit outs for O'Brien, smash Tiki. Uh, who only got 22, 13 for Reed, 8 for Thilthorp, 2 for Walker, 1 for Amadi. It was a very contested game, the SCG, and finished 10 minutes later than the other one, or 10 to 15 minutes later than the other game that was at the same time, but the Swans had way more of the ball, only went inside 50 to two more times, but again, used the ball better in their 50. The Crows smashed them in here, outs, one out of the centre clearances too, but stoppage clearances were in favour of the Sydney Swans. Um... Had way more uncontested footy, did Sydney. Way more marks. 91 to 35. The Crows took 35 marks in a whole game. And that's really not going to cut it sometimes. Well, that won't cut it at all, really. Um, that, That's a big dominance there for Sydney. The Crows did have their times where they looked like they were going to try, really come and take the lead. But in the end, the Swans just brought more pressure, took the game on a lot better. The Crows are still a young, rebuilding side. And after this performance, they still do have a fair way to go. But again, an okay performance on the road. So half time nears at the Adelaide Oval, Port Adelaide 5 5 35, the Cats 9 3 57. They've just taken a bit further in this quarter. They've really gone from a point where it was pretty much a deadlock to a really exciting contest to a game that has penultimately fizzled out so far. Port Adelaide had a very good first quarter, but the Cats just good enough on the end. Uh, Jeremy Cameron with the goal, which put them in front at quarter time. Then Dangerfield comes running out the ball to start off the second quarter with a bang. Port Adelaide respond, but from there, it's been Cats ever since. And um, at half time, it looks like this game does have the potentiality of being a real blowout if the Cats can get a real handle on Port Adelaide. So the second half is going to be a big one. Port Adelaide, again, not wanting to lose percentage. Uh, and we'll go and check out the ladder. All right, but before we go and check out the ladder, it is the Lions uh, and the Suns at the Gabba, then the Doggies and the Demons, the two massive Saturday night games. Doggies, Suns, two teams warning the finals. Melbourne, Brisbane, two teams in the top four. So pretty big games tonight. Uh, Carlton versus GWS is the first game tomorrow. Collingwood, Essendon could be one of the biggest and probably the best game of the round. Essendon been improving. 
Collingwood being, well, playing well, winning those close games. And then the Eagles and the Saints finishes off the round. Now the ladder. Now again, Port Adelaide don't really want to be milking up too much percentage. It started at 106. And with the live ladder on now, it would go down to 104. So they've pretty much lost 2% here. And if Gold Coast get a result on their terms or even like lose by a very small amount to Brisbane, then they can again jump skip the power if the power lose. And regardless of their result, if Port Adelaide lose too much percentage, well then again, yeah, there's lots of different options. And then on the top end of terms, the Cats would just again clearly go top of the table awaiting the Demons result tonight. But if Port Adelaide were to win the game, then they will go up into 10th position and put St Kilda's finals threats um, yeah, put St Kilda's final threats even harder. And then the Tigers, they're currently a game and a half clear of all, all other contenders. Well, a game, well, half a game clear of the Doggies and the Saints, which is still to play. And then a game and a half clear of the Suns and the Power. Well, that's going to wrap us up for another three game match reviews. So, uh, in tomorrow's, first thing tomorrow's three game, uh, the Cast just kicked a goal, 28 points. Now things will be getting really tough for the Power. It is still definitely 100% doable, but wow, they haven't had a great quarter. The Cats have really um, pushed their lead even further. But tomorrow's three-game match reviews will have Port Adelaide versus Geelong, Brisbane versus Gold Coast, and the Doggies and the Demons. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell. See you guys and then miss another video on the channel. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Bye, everyone. Blaming footy out.